So let me introduce our next speaker. His name is uh, Lorenzo Santi from Italy. So Lorenzo, he did his uh, degree in mechanical engineering at the University of Parma in October 2022. And he just started his uh, PhD in uh, cooperation with the industry. It's a so-called um, 3-8 cycle mm -hmm. in November 2020 in collaboration with the Curare America. The topic of his uh, PhD program is the uh, viscoelastic behavior of the interlayer and the influence on laminated glass structures. So his uh, presentation uh, today, the title is uh, Fractional Viscoelastic Modeling of Polymeric Interlayers in Laminated Glass, Comparisons with Pony's Serious Approach. So please welcome Lorenzo, and the stage is yours. Thank you very much for the introduction. Okay. Good evening to everybody. Uh, this work has been made in, at the University of Parma in collaboration with uh, QRA, and uh, we, today we are talking about uh, two different ways to see the, prony, the experimental relaxation function through the prony series, that is a classical approach, and through an innovative approach that is uh, through uh, fractional viscoelasticity. Okay, the, as you all know, the laminated glass uh, is a structure composed by two or more glass plies bonded together by an interla polymeric interlayer. In this study, the polymeric interlayer is supposed to be soft. That means that uh, no axial uh, and or flexural stiffness uh, is considered, and all the interlayer can only provide uh, shear coupling between the glass plies. The most used uh, polymeric interlayers uh, are uh, the PVB, the SG, and the EVA. In many uh, engineering applications, the quasi-elastic approximation holds. That means that uh, the viscoelastic memory of the, the material, the polymeric material, is neglected. And uh, uh, the stiffness of the material depends only on the load duration and the temperature. And everyone can find its value uh, on tables. But uh, this model is not always accurate because it has been demonstrated that uh, we, if the lows, load varies very rapidly or uh, it knows monotonically increasing, this approximation don't hold. So in our study, uh, a full viscoelastic analysis is required. The first way to interpret the experimental relaxation function is through the prony series, that is the classical approach. Uh, the prony series is a summation of exponential terms. Each exponential term is described by two parameters. The first parameter is R1. The first parameter is R1, that is the amplitude of the exponential terms, and the other parameter is theta i, that is the decaying time of the exponential. Uh, we have also another uh, parameter that is R0, uh, that is the uh, stiffness of the material for time that goes to infinite. Uh, as we can see in the picture on the left, uh, we have uh, experimental relaxation function described with uh, red dots uh, and the prony series approximation. Here, uh, the relaxation function has been approximated with uh, six terms, but the, the approximation uh, is not uh, very, very good. We need more terms. Uh, to approximate this relaxation function, at least 10 terms. That means that we have to calibrate more than 21 parameters. And also, the calibration of these parameters is very, very difficult. In this study, it has been used the domain of influence method. This is just an example to show how many parameters we need to calibrate a relaxation, these parameters and to represent a relaxation function. Here, the blue line is a power law that in the below graph uh, is a line. Uh, we choose a power law as a reference function because uh, by the, exper the experiments of Nupting, uh, the experimental point of the relaxation function are well fitted by power laws. 
And now here we can f see that uh, we need many, many terms to interpret this function. The other way to uh, represent uh, the relaxation function is through uh, power laws, as anticipated. Here we have uh, uh, the same relaxation function that we see previously, represented with red dots, and uh, the piecewise, uh, piecewise function composed by, in this case, three power laws that uh, fit very well our uh, relaxation function. The power law is uh, represented in this equation, and uh, it is also uh, it, it varies with two param parameters: Cn, that is the stiffness of our interlayer, and n, that in this case is the slope of the line. That in the below graph, uh, the line is the power law. It has been extended this uh, power law to the case of a free lateral. Uh, that is a piecewise function. The time interval has been divided in three different branches. Uh, we have, in this case, we have to calibrate less parameters, but uh, they are also very, very easy to calibrate because uh, we only need a geometrical interpolation. So we, we need less parameters, the approximation is better, and it is, they are also easier to calibrate. Here, in this, in this graph, we have uh, just an example to show three different uh, relaxation functions of three different uh, uh, polymeric interlayer, that is the, poly the PVB clear, PVBS, and DSG, and uh, the values of these parameters. We can notice that uh, not every, one, uh, every uh, relaxation function needs uh, uh, a piecewise uh, power law. Uh, but the, for example, the SG material only uh, needs uh, one power law. So here we have a brief uh, uh, some, uh, a comparison between these two methods. The, the first great advantage uh, of the power law instead of the prony series is that uh, the experimental points, uh, uh, this result is provided by the experimental campaign by Nutting, are well fitted if we use uh, uh, a power law. The second, uh, with the power law approximation, we have to calibrate less parameters, and they are also easier to calibrate. So it presents a free great advantage. Now, uh, before going into details of our model, we have to talk about uh, fractional derivatives. A fractional derivative is uh, generally a derivative of any arbitrary order. We all know the first derivative, the second derivative, the third, but can only exist the derivative of a function of uh, 0.5, for example, of a, or any other uh, non-integer number. So uh, here we have a definition of fractional derivative provided by Caputo. That is uh, simply uh, an integral with a power law memory kernel. Of course, there are other definitions, for example, the riemann liouville definition, but it is very, very similar. In this study, it has been used this definition. We will see later why. Uh, we have to mention gamma, that is the Euler's gamma function. It is a simple generalization of the factorial to non any uh, integer number or complex. OK. Now we can write the fractional constitutive equation of the interlayer. interlayer. Let's first denote with R uh, the relaxation function. We can write from Boltzmann superposition principle an equation that links the shear stress and the shear strain of the interlayer. Now we are supposing that uh, our relaxation function is described by a power law. So we can substitute uh, the power law into the Boltzmann superposition principle, and we can find this equation. Here we can recognize the definition of fractional Caputo, previously mentioned. So we can say that uh, our constitutive equation of the interlayer is, uh, is, is this. Of, of, is tau, that is the shear stress, equal to a constant multiplied by the fractional derivatives of the shear strain. Very simple expression. Of course, this expression can be extended to a piecewise function. Now, uh, our model is the following. To study the difference between these two methods, 
let's uh, take into consideration, into account, a simply supported beam, laminated beam, under the di uniformly distributed load. The trend of the load is here shown. Okay, the mathematical steps to reach uh, the solution, to find the solution, are the following. First, we have to write uh, the uh, dynamic equilibrium of the uh, glass plies with their initial and boundary condition. And now we have uh, a system of equations that depends uh, on two unknowns. The unknowns are the vertical displacement and the axial force. Uh, second, we can expand our unknowns because the unknowns and the load depends on time and on space. We can expand our unknowns to separate the dependence of time and space using uh, an approach a la Galerkin. This approach is based on uh, uh, supposing a shape function of the deformation of our beam. Now we have uh, to deal with the fractional uh, derivatives and we have to solve an equation that contains it. Uh, to do it, uh, we are using the Groot van Lettrikov approximation. This is just a numerical approximation to uh, numerically solve the fractional derivatives. And this, is this is based on triangular matrix. Uh, one big supposition is that uh, the step time in which we are dividing our time interval is supposed to be uh, constant. So now we have uh, a triangular equation, a triangular matrix, sorry, that we can uh, easily invert and find the solution through the Gauss method of uh, the inversion of a matrix. Now, this uh, method can also be extended to a piecewise function of the relaxation function, and it is very easy to find the solution. Here there is uh, another example of another relaxation function that has been described with four branches and four power laws. But the problem is not uh, uh, di more difficult because the coefficients are very easy to find. Now the solution with the Prony series. First, uh, the uh, constitutive, constitutive equation of the, the glass plies are still valid, of course. But now the relaxation function is not described by a power law, by, but by uh, the Prony series. We also uh, we still use uh, an approach a la Galerkin to separate the dependence of space by time. And to find the solution, we are using a finite difference approach based on a step-by-step -step integration. One big difficulty that uh, we have to mention is that uh, when we are considering very long time scale, so we are interested in uh, the solution uh, after years. So we are interested in the deformation of our beam after many, many years. Uh, this could be a problem with the Prony series because, uh, uh, as we said, the Prony series is a summation of exponential terms. And each, each exponential tef, terms is, have a decay in time, theta i. But if uh, that decay in time is lower than the step time, if we are choosing big, big time step, we cannot uh, divide uh, the time interval into infinite uh, steps, so we have to choose a, a, a small number of the order of 10,000 terms, and our time step uh, is big. So if uh, our time step is bigger than the decay in time, uh, this, thinks, this means that uh, a lot of numerical problems occur. So, in order to avoid it, we have to neglect uh, the terms of the Prony series that uh, have a decay in time uh, lower than the step time. This implies an underestimation of the relaxation function, as we can see in the graph, and that, uh, of course, uh, and, and then we can have an overestimation of the deflection. Okay, now here are some data that has been used to solve our problem. Of course, this data can be changed as we want. The solution has been calculated for two different interlayer, the PVB clear and the PVBS. And it is important to mention the two limits, the layered limit and the monolithic limit. The layered limit is the case in uh, which we, we have uh, no coupling between the class plies. And the monolithic limit is the limit where we have full coupling. 
it is very important to mention these two limits because uh, uh, only comparing our results with the interlayer we can uh, uh, observe if our solution is closer to the layer of the monolithic limit. And so we can understand the, the influence of the interlayer. Okay, now here we have our numerical results for the first interlayer that is the PVBS. The results has been calculated for uh, three months and for four years. Uh, we can observe that the solution obtained through fractional model and through prony series are very close to each other. So also, the, uh, even if we are using a new model, the results are very close to the classical and very known model based on prony series. Here are the results uh, uh, of, the of the other material. And also in this case, we can observe that the results are very close to each other. Here, a brief analysis uh, for, uh, that uh, is important to mention that uh, for the first material, uh, both the solution converge at the same number of time step. And here we have uh, the second convergence analysis. In this case, uh, the fractional model needs uh, more time step than the prony series. But this is not a problem because we have to talk about computational time. The big advantage is on the computational time because as we can see in the table, the computational time of the fractional model is much, much lower than the prony series. And even if sometimes uh, the fractional model requires more time step, it is still convenient per because the computational time is much, much lower. That's why the fractional model is based on the Grud van Lettling of approximation. And that means that to find the solution, we have only to invert a strip matrix. Instead, in the Prony series, the solution is obtained by a step-by-step -step integration. And at each time step, we have to recalculate the entire relaxation function. And it, it is very computational heavier. OK. So, uh, in conclusion, the fractional model presents a lot of advantage over the prony series. The first is that uh, we have less uh, parameters to calibrate. They are easier also to calibrate. The numerical solution is more stable, and uh, it requires less computational time. OK, I finished the presentation. I hope that uh, you like it. <laughs> Uh, we can also prepare a software uh, to implement uh, every, any type of problems or any type of uh, interlayer. Here are, you have some references of the works that uh, uh, inspired this job, and uh, that's it. Thank you for your attention.